Okay, so as I said, uh, for me, um, for me, the problem is very simple. Okay, so I will, uh, for me, the problem of liberalism in China is very, I try to make it simple, perhaps too simple. So it goes, uh, it, it goes with, uh, with this idea. So uh, my point here it won't be to, to speak about the present or the past. It will be more to try to speak about the future, to try to speak about perspective, okay? what, what, what will happen in the future. Okay? So, uh, so of course, it is open to interpretation and open to different uh, analysis. So it is more about perspective. So uh, my point is that uh, in liberalism, in the theory of liberalism, there is a notion of perspective, okay? There is a notion of evolution. There is a notion of what will be the consequence of economic development, okay? And um, according to, um, to some scholars, to some liberal scholars, we, which are, who are very famous in the field, uh, for them, uh, capitalist development is associated with the rise of democracy, in part because it's associated with the transformation of the class structure, strengthening the working class. What that means is that the liberal, from the liberal point of view, the development of economy, uh, the development of economy goes with uh, democracy. That means that the economic development primed by liberalism is going with the political liberalization of society, which means also, for example, democracy, but not only democracy as voting system, because it's not the most important part of democracy. Democracy also because of all the values that go with democracy. Okay, it's not only about voting, it's also about all the things that go with that. Right of uh, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, and all these things. Okay, and so for, for these uh, liberal or neoliberal uh, thinkers, uh, for them, uh, economic development gives rise to political liberalization. Okay, and so uh, my point is really simple. Is this theory that economic development gives rise to political liberalization, is it true or will be it true for China? So for me this is a question, okay, very simple. So is China a counter example or an example of this idea? Okay. So this is a very simple question, perhaps too simple, but this is a question that I, I want to write. Okay. So, uh, and uh, so some people, and I will try to answer the question, and we try also to criticize some of the, of the, of the assumptions. So for example, for a uh, scholar, which is named uh, Ruben, uh, in a paper about uh, when will Chinese people be free in the Journal of Democracy in 2007. So he makes a chart, okay, and in this chart he says that, actually as you can say, what he, what he said is that, as you can see, what he said is that according to the level of per capita, GDP per capita, you have different level of uh, freedom, okay? And uh, so this is a kind of, of projection, and he says that in 2025, okay, we will see this, right? Okay, in 2025, uh, because of the GDP per capita, uh, will be uh, this one, so ch uh, China will be uh, uh, free, okay, free of course, in his understanding of the word freedom, okay? And this notion is the same that, uh, that is uh, also developed by uh, the United States and the CIA when they say that uh, China is slated to pass the threshold of uh, um, $15,000 per capita uh, in the next five years, which is often a trigger for democratization. Okay, so this is the idea of which is one of the most big assumptions of liberalism. That means that economic development, if it is a liberal development, will go with political liberalization and uh, freedom and uh, democracy. Okay, so what I want to, to, to do is actually to uh, analyze and perhaps criticize this idea because it is too naive. Okay. But that doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not endorsing the purpose of liberalism. So, uh, here the notion of, uh, liberalis of liberalist thinkers is that uh, the, liberaliz the political liberalization in China is only a matter of time. So only a matter of time and if we go necessarily with, political, with economic development. So if we wait a certain time, 
uh, here we will have uh, this political liberalization in the Western sense of the term. But I think that this uh, activist assumption is, it looks good and it looks uh, interesting, but I, actually I think it is naive and perhaps also dangerous. Why it is dangerous? Because if you say that you need that the consequence of economic development will be democratization, one of the consequences can be that in order to achieve the, the, uh, economic development, you should not have a democratic uh, system. You understand? You understand the point? So that means that if, economic, if at the end of economic development you have democratization, one of the consequences for some scholars is that actually, as for example, um, Huntington uh, said, you know, you know, you know it, okay? uh, conflict of civilization, okay? what he says is that political participation should be held down when, uh, be, because of, in order to promote economic development. That means that during the process of development, it is not good to have democracy, it is better to have a more um, auto authoritarian regime. Okay. So this is what some people, uh, some people say, but actually, as you see, it is a consequence of the, of the, of the uh, theory of liberalism. Okay? It's actually a consequence of the theory of liberalism. And here, actually, this notion is like uh, uh, this uh, assumption of liberalism. It is like uh, the Kuznet curve, but, ad but adapted to uh, politics, uh, to political regime. What that means is that, in the, I don't know if you, I will speak about that uh, this afternoon, in the uh, economic Kuznet curve, what you have is that you have here inequality and here income per capita. And in the environmental Kuznet curve, you have here environmental degradation and here income per capita. That means that some people say that at the beginning, if at the beginning of development, okay, for example, if here it is environment, you are making a lot of environmental degradation, but then when you start to develop at a certain point, you have new policy because you will become richer, you have new policy, and then you can start to have better environmental policies. Okay? Some people say that. Okay? And here the idea is like the same for politics. And here, it's, here instead of um, inequality of environmental degradation, you, you, are, you are putting state control. So some people say that in the beginning, in order to, to uh, have better income per capita, you must have a higher state control. But then when you have enough, state, uh, enough um, development, GDP per capita, you can gradually shift from a, an authoritarian regime to a more democratic regime. Okay? Okay? So this is, uh, this is uh, the, first, uh, the first notion, and uh, we try to uh, criticize uh, and to correct, correct this, uh, this assumption. And the um, seg uh, second point is that uh, to say that uh, economic, the economic development in China will necessarily bring political liberalization is also naive because actually some people say that economic development can also give to the state more funding, more money in order to implement state control. Okay? This is for example what a uh, Chinese scholar say, Pei uh, Mingxin, what he says that actually we should not think that more development will necessarily mean more freedom because more development means also more money in order to control more. So, uh, so yeah, it's not so simple, you see? It's not so simple that you assume that more development necessarily means more democratization, more political liberalization. Okay, and, um, okay, and, and then and another part of the question, why this, uh, why this uh, assumption is also problematic, um, it is because uh, it has been actually the assumption has been criticized on the basis of empirical studies. So actually, what some people uh, demonstrate, like uh, this scholars uh, in this paper about uh, modernization theory, actually they show that uh, political liberalization is not a consequence, uh, not a direct uh, consequence of economic development. Actually, what they say is that the emergence of democracy is not a byproduct 
of economic development. Democracy is or is not established by political actors. That means that economic that means that democratization is not a consequence of simply a consequence of economic development. It is a decision <coughs> of some political actors, or some uh, can be external political actors, can be internal political actors, can be government, can be so civil society, okay? It can be the government that decides for democracy, it can be because of revolt, civil society that you have democracy, it can be because of external pressure, like for example the US, okay? Uh, pressure that you, uh, that you shift to democracy, like in Japan. But what he says is that the main, the main driver is not economy, the main driver is political decision. Okay, so that means that there is not a simple correlation between economic development and uh, democratization. Okay. So, uh, if I... Oh, how much I have? Uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Okay, so if, uh, if I, I go back to the question, <coughs> the question is whether continuous economic development will necessarily trigger political liberalization in China. So can we expect, hope or don't hope, it depends on your point of view, can we expect, okay, I don't know if you say hope or fear, okay, it depends on your, your position, can we expect that this economic development will uh, necessarily trigger and uh, produce political liberalization in China. So actually, if you adopt a liberal point of view, you can say two things. First, you can say that actually, for the moment, economic development has produced uh, some uh, consequence in terms of democratization. That means that uh, Chinese society is more free in terms of many uh, freedom of expression, in terms of uh, publication of ideas in terms of circulation of people than before. That means that the growth of GDP in China has also had some good consequence for uh, society. Okay? Moreover, if you adopt a, a liberal point of view, you can even, even say that if it is true also that in, in China there is still some problem in terms of human rights, the implementation of human rights, and because of political opponents or minority problems, some people will say that yes, but if there is this political, this problem, this limit of political liberalization in China, it is precisely become because the economic development in China has not been framed by liberalization, but it has been framed by the monopoly or by the uh, economic, by the state owner development. So if there is no uh, liberalization in China, yet it is not because of the problem of liberalization, of liberalism, but it is because liberalism, uh, economic liberalism has not been really implemented in China because it is because of the mass, uh, an important majority of the economy is still driven by the state and not by, uh, by private company. Okay, so you can also say that. Okay, so in this, in this way you can justify also why from, from a liberal point of view there is still limitation to the, to the liberalization of society. And, um, and then very shortly, uh, uh, for a conclusion, what you can, you can uh, these things that I just said, you can also criticize these things. Okay? For two reasons. The first one, yeah, I will say, is to criticize these things because when I say that economic development will, uh, the result of economic development will be democratization, here, yeah, there is two things. There is two problematic things. Are we, are we sure that democratization is the goal? First. So this is, a, this is a question that will be raised, for example, by Daniel Bell or by a scholar of which are uh, defending uh, cultural conservatism or cultural priority. That means that we can, uh, we can uh, deconstruct, we can reflect of the very goal of uh, liberalization. Is democratization a good thing? Is democracy a good thing or not? This is the first option. But my point of view is not to put into question the value of democracy or the value of democratization, which is for me uh, obvious, okay? and I won't follow this track myself. For me, the most, the most important question is, is not uh, to question the value of 
political liberalization, but to, value, to question the value of economic development, and especially in China. So here the problem is that, are we sure that economic development, growth development, is in itself a good thing because of the consequence mm. of development for, uh, for the world? Okay, just a, a last slide. Okay. So uh, as, you, as, you know, as you know today, uh, China is the first uh, C, uh, C, emitter of CO2 in the world. But if you look at emission per capita, okay, emission per capita, China is very uh, small, uh, uh, only a small role in terms of emission per capita. You understand my point? My point is that if and, and it's only a small part in terms of emission of capital, but it's already the first one. You understand my point? So if the goal is development, <coughs> if the goal is development, that means that if China has the same CO2 emission per capita than the US, you see, it will be because of, of course, of the difference of, of the number of the population. Okay? The environmental consequence will be completely completely uh, different and will be bigger than what we already have. Okay. So here the problem is the consequence of development for the environment and in China instead and also uh, for the rest uh, for the rest uh, of the world. Okay. And uh, because in China itself this this economic development create environmental problems and these environmental problems also the reaction of these environmental problems also we don't know what can be the reaction to these environmental problems in China because in China you have already a lot of protests against environmental problems and also because in Asia you have a lot of competing countries okay Japan China Vietnam Philippines who are competing for oil and, and fish uh, in this region and with the growing with the growth of demand and needs Okay, what will be the consequence? Okay, it's also another another question. Okay, thank you for your attention.